We've been on a, a really a Wednesday night series, and we've been going through the book of Matthew, and we're really in a, a place where we've been talking a little bit about persecution or a lot about persecution, and we started thinking, and when I, when I started this series, and we just started the series because we're going through the book of Matthew, and this was the next verse, and it started talking about persecution. And I remember when I began to even write this, the sermon on persecution, I was thinking American, Americans aren't persecuted. So why are we talking about persecution? And then I, I really began, as I began to study, I started realizing that persecution is the highest form of any enemy resistance. So I found out that the, the, the devil only uses persecution as a last resort if everything else didn't work. And what that means that the enemy has two purposes for persecution, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I'll let you know what they are, is to stop us from speaking and to stop us from doing ministry. But if somehow he's already stopped us from speaking, and what I mean by that is we're not sharing our testimony outside of these four walls, and we're not sharing our faith outside of these four walls, there's no need for persecution because our conversation has already been conquered by nonsense. So I don't need to bring up persecution. And then stop us from doing ministry. I think we've turned into, a, and I'm not saying our church, but I think overall, Modern Christianity has turned into entertainment. And we come to church not to worship God. We don't come to church to serve God and serve his church. We come to church like this is a Hollywood movie. And we are, see, I want you to get this. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a superstar. I'm a servant. There's only one king of kings and lord of lords. His name is Jesus. We are here to serve him and to serve one another. How many get that? But we've gone to the point that there's been a lot of glory that should be going to God. Men and women have received it. But God is saying we're getting out of the era of the cool pastors and the cool worship leaders. I want people that are holy, not cool. Because your goal could be to be cool, and this is what happens. You become so cool, you become worldly. So, but but, but, but I, I got to like, be relevant. Be relevant. This is how you're relevant. Be filled with the power of God. People need the power of God. They don't need your coolness. So let's keep on talking about persecution. There's people all over the world being persecuted. And Jesus starts off his first sermon and he includes this subject. He was talking about persecution before it happened. It wasn't something that was happening. It was something that was going to happen. But he's training his, his disciples or he's training his followers to be able to handle future pressure. Because anytime you want to do anything great for God, anytime you want to you want to change, anytime you want to be a good father, you want to be a good mother, you want to worship God, there will be resistance. And 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 if you don't understand, there'll be resistance. As soon as you get resistance, you're gonna be. This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna be discouraged. You're going to be thinking, wait a second, I didn't sign up for resistance. I didn't sign up for war. I signed up to be blessed. But, I, but this is what Jesus said. Let's look at what Jesus said in Matthew 5.10. It says, you're blessed. So I want to be blessed. He goes, okay, let me show you how to get blessed. How many signed up to be blessed? It's okay. You can say, yeah, that's me. Don't get shy now. You, you want to be blessed. How many want to be blessed? In the 90s or two, early 2000s, we were singing, blessed, 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 blessed. I don't, I don't know the song, but it goes, it goes blessed, blessed, blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed everywhere I go in the midnight. It's going to be a turnaround, something like that. But we love that song, blessed. 
So then Jesus starts off his first sermon and he teaches us how to live a blessed life. And that word blessed is a Greek word, makarios, and it means this, super blessed. He goes, I, I want to show you how to live a super blessed life. And it means this, you're blessed when, oh, okay, I want to know. When your commitment to God provokes persecution. Oh, Lord. That don't even sound right. Persecution and blessing in the same sentence. This is what it's saying, that your commitment to God can provoke something in the spiritual realm. Your commitment to God, this is what it does, in the spiritual realm, people start recognizing rank. The less committed you are, the lower rank you have. He, the devil's not stealing your this, I want you to get it. He's not stealing your salvation. He's stealing your authority. When the apostles walked the earth, they didn't just speak about Christianity. They spoke with power. Someone say authority. So the level of your submission to God will determine the level of your power and authority. And the more, the more power and authority, this is what happens. When you're walking in power, this is what's happening. You become a threat to the devil's agenda. A committed Christian is dangerous to hell. So when, when someone's committed, let's talk about the word committed for a minute. We want to get to the point that we're provoking hell. I, I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing family and friends dying. I'm tired of seeing family and friends committed suicide. I'm tired of seeing family and friends addicted. I'm tired of, I'm tired of, I'm tired of seeing family and friends not even think about God and my life has no impact on them. This is what I'm saying, that our commitment to God should make some people uncomfortable. They should not be comfortable sinning around you. Not that you're trying to be the Holy Ghost police, but this is what I'm saying. When you come in, they know another authority has entered the room. There's another standard, there's another value, there's another speed, there's another conversation. Hey, watch out. There are for real believers. Come on, do we have some for real believers in this casa? I know you're for real believers, you're here on Wednesday. But this is what's going to happen. The more for real we become, the more committed we become, the fire is going to spread. On fire believers spread fire. <laughs> Jesus never suffered for a crowd. Crowds followed him. When you're committed to God 100%, you're keeping it 100. You're going to be a source of the power of God, the encouragement of God, the healing of God, the freedom of God. And there's going to be people wanting to follow you because they're going to want what you got. But why isn't there persecution? Maybe we have a commitment problem. Maybe we're not committed enough to Jesus to, to influence hell yet. Maybe we're more interested in fitting in with the world and their values than standing up for God's values. Okay. I'm telling you, the world wants on fire Christians, they need them. They just seen so many hypocrites and weak, com weak commitments, they don't even know what Christianity is anymore. And, 
And understand this, don't become a leader and live a wishy-washy life. Well, I'm just a human. No, you're a leader. Respect the position. And live up to the standards of your leadership. Well, you know, the, you, know I, you gotta have grace and mercy. Well, hold on. Of course you have grace and mercy, but you're a leader. Stop excusing your compromising lifestyle. And using scripture to justify your, your, your compromise and your lukewarmness and your worldliness. You're a leader. Represent Christ. Yeah. It's getting hot up in here on a Wednesday night. But we're talking about commitment to God provokes persecution? Commitment means this, devotion. Someone say devotion. And... How many know there's levels of devotion? Faithfulness. Someone say faithfulness. So when we're unfaithful, we're not committed. And if you're not committed, you're not going to provoke hell. <laughs> I want to provoke hell. So, Pastor, you're crazy. I'm crazy. I want to invade hell. And I want to take souls out of hell. And I want to send demons back to hell. I want hell to know my name. Uh-oh, there's Marco. I want, I want, when I walk into L.A., they recognize some authority walked into L.A. Come on, when the Way Royal Lowry shows up, wait a second, they're supposed to be in San Bernardino. What are they doing here in L.A.? Do they want to take over? We got things set up, and this is what God is saying. Whatever we bind on earth, we'll be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth, we'll be loose in heaven. This is what God is saying. It's time for us to get committed and start using our authority to help some people get set free. Someone say provoke. provoke. Hell. Hell. <laughs> Someone talking to um, today. Let's go, Pastor. Aren't you scared to go into those crazy neighborhoods in San Bernardino? <laughs> and I, but, but I'm a little crazy. I go, look, I'm saying I might have started scared, but I ain't scared no more. I ain't scared no more. Because I got the power of the Holy Spirit. And I told her, so when I go in, I don't go in my power. I go in God's power. And greater is he that's in me than anything I'm facing out there. I walk with the power of God. Come on. You're not alone. You got God backing you up. And this is what we want. We want great commitment from God with little commitment from us. Great commitment from God with little commitment from us. We want maximum results with minimal effort. How about this? Let's look for maximum results with maximum effort. Let's stop being those mediocre Christians that are trying to do the least they can to get the most they can. Do all of it. Just show up on, if you could come on Wednesday, come on Wednesday. If you come on Tuesday discipleship, Come on Tuesday, disciples. You come on Sunday morning, come on Sunday morning. You used to do that in the world. If there were four parties on the weekend, you didn't miss none of them. Some of you after a party used to go to an after party. If that party was a dud, you made your own party in your garage. And now when it comes to God, you feel like, I'm going to do my limited duty. I'm going to do my duty, my du duty. <laughs> and the devil's like, ah, yeah, yeah. And they want to use Jesus' name. And they think just because they're using Jesus' name, it gives them power. They, got, they can only use Jesus' name with power when they're submitted to the name. 
Okay. I don't even know where I'm going. Yeah, we're just so right here. God provokes hell. <laughs> so commitment means devotion. Someone say devotion. Faithfulness. Loyalty. Your loyalty will be tested. And, and I want you to understand, some of the ways your loyalty is tested is tested by your loyalty to your present leaders. Because some of you guys think that you could be loyal to God and be disloyal to your leaders. If you're disloyal here, you're just a disloyal person. Some of us sold out our, our commitment to God, our power after church. Because instead of praising God when you received, you began to talk about somebody that you should be loyal to. Yeah, praise the Lord. We're just speaking the word. That's all we're doing. We ain't, we ain't trying to pick no fight with you. I'm trying to pick a fight with the devil. Don't mistake this. I'm, I, come on, I'm coming after. Come on, I'm coming after you. Come on, I'm coming after your kids. Come on, I'm, I, I want to pull them out of hell. Come on, I'm going after cities. Come on, we're going after Pomona. We're going after TJ. But we need some committed people, more committed than the drug cartel. Are you scared, Pastor? No, I ain't scared. You know how, why I'm not scared? I love people too much. When you love people, you don't get scared because your love for them conquers all your fear. My why is too big to get scared. I already made up my mind that I'll die for this cause. Praise the Lord. Someone said dedication means commitment. Commitment means dedication. Someone said dedication. Someone, you know what that means? Stick with it. Someone stick with it. Don't be here, don't be here this month and be gone next month. And then act like you are dedicated. And then, and then get deceived into thinking there's a demon that comes to tell you, you know what, you and God are tight. That me and God, we're tight. <laughs> Anybody that tells me that they're tight with God is they are not tight with God. <laughs> because when you're tight with God, you don't have to use, we're tight. <laughs> God's tight and we're tight. How many understand that? There's a deception. Someone say, be dedicated. You know what that means? Start something and finish it. Be devoted to the thing. Be devoted to your house. Bring the tithe. Bring the offering. Bring the praise. Bring yourself. Sit yourself down and worship God. Serve God in a ministry. Complete your discipleship. Praise the Lord. Commitment also means standard. Someone say standard. So this is what he's saying. Keep the... He said, what's the standard? The Bible's the standard. What's the standard? What's the standard? We need Christians that use God's word as their standard, not the world's standard. You know, pastor, you know, you better just watch that because, you know, you got to be tolerant. I'm going to tell you this. That's a weird word. Because I think we're misinterpreting what tolerant means. Today this is what we're doing, using tolerance to excuse sin. If someone is living in sin, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to love them enough to tell them the truth. Because if it could take them to hell... That's not being tolerant. That's being unselfish. That's being inconsiderate. I say, well, pastor, you know, you might get some backlash on that. See, there you go. The reason you're trying to be tolerant, you don't want to stand out. Okay, don't leave. Just stay right here. Right now, we're just saturating the demons that you got in the presence of God so you get set free. We're loosening them up right now so we can set you free from them. <laughs> Okay, so the persecution, 
This is what Jesus said. The persecution drives, e drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. So what it's saying is when the enemy persecutes you, it drives us as believers deeper into the power, deeper into being effective, deeper into wisdom, deeper into the kingdom, deeper into results. What he's saying is the persecution is going to advance you. You know what that means? It's going to backfire. I love that. Let's look at this real quick. Um, there's a young man that was persecuted in Nigeria, Danjuma Sakaru, and he was 13 years old when this happened, and this happened like five years ago. And Danjuma's last memories of the attack on his village on January 28th was running for his life. And then the pain of a machete slicing into the left side of his head more than a thousand Islamic militants had singled out his Christian village for destruction that day. Attacking at 6 a.m., they burned homes and did their best to kill any Christians they managed to find. Hours after the attack, those trying to put the pieces of the village back together came across Danjuma, in a pool of his own blood. Altogether, they found 23 dead and 38 injured. Dunjama's left arm had also been hacked with a machete. His right eye had been sliced and his genitals cut off. He was in such, such a bad state, a grave was dug awaiting his death. It still waits. Dunjama recovered and is a vital part of his community today. While he still bear, bears heavy scars across his face and body from this attack, they aren't the first thing you notice about Dunjama when you see him. The first thing you notice is a huge grateful grin. The joy comes from the Lord. He will tell you. Dunjama not only forgives his attackers, but almost pities them for the condition of their hearts. He said this, I forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. If they had love, they wouldn't behave that way. Now, this is a young man at 13 years old that's being persecuted because his village is one of the only Christian villages in the area, and it provokes hell. And hell says, we must destroy that village. But when they try to destroy the village, Dunjama survives, and Dunjama is being a light, and Dunjama is spreading the good news, and Dunjama is preaching to the Wayworld Outreach. So now, why does the enemy persecute us? And I'm just going to hit these two and we're done, because that's all we can handle today. All right. Number one, why does the enemy persecute us? Number one, to shut us up. To what? Like shut up or else. Uh-oh. We, I can tell you this. We as a church that's alive and well and full of the power of God in these last days, there will be a time where we'll be threaten to shut up or else. And I really believe that the reason this message is so anointed and so powerful because our commander in chief is getting us ready for battle. And he's given us some backbone to live a holy, committed, dedicated life so that 
we can make a difference in people's eternal existence. We're not going to be sitting here fighting with each other. We're fighting against the devil. Some of you right now, you need to stop fighting your husband and your wife. You're in the wrong battlefield. And the devil's laughing at you and he's saying, you're fighting against your husband and your wife and that's your persecution. That's not your persecution. That's your distraction. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. You know what you need to do with your husband? Learn how to love that crazy guy. Yeah, but he's a sinner. So what? You're called to love sinners. Let's start loving the first sinner you meet every time you go home. That little devil. <laughs> love the devil out of him. <laughs> Past God, why don't you give a better husband than me? He goes, I didn't give him. You chose him. Stop blaming me for your craziness. <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> all right, let's keep going. Oh, man, praise the Lord. But all things work together for good. Praise God for that one, right? Okay. Some say, someone say the devil uses persecution to shut us up. To what? Have you ever, have you ever had someone tell you shut up? Like, that gets me, like, mad. Like, what you, what like, would you say? I know you didn't tell me. I, I, what? Do you know who you're messing with? I'm from San Bernardino, 909. No, let's keep, <laughs> all right, let's keep going. All right. Well, I, well I'll call the police 911. They ain't coming. <laughs> Not in San Bernardino. They're too busy. <laughs> right, let's keep going, all right? Acts 418, all right. Check this out. Now, I want you to get this. Persecution, um, persecution gets its orders from hell. But it uses people. So what does it do? It uses what? Who are under the influence of Satan. But when, this is what, what, what the Bible's saying. When they persecute you, don't lash out at them because you're not fighting against them. You're fighting against the, the powers that sent them. Even if they persecute you, these people that are persecuting you, you're called to reach. You guys understand that? So now, the apostles are being persecuted now in Acts 14. Acts what? It's just chapter 4. So they call the apostles back in. Now, these are the same apostles that when Jesus was being crucified, they all ran away because they were scared of the persecution. But there's a difference here. Because earlier in Acts, in Acts chapter 2, they were baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. So these weren't the same apostles that ran they're the same in look, but they're different in power. They have the power of the Holy Spirit. So now, where they used to run, they're standing. But let's do what they said. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Just listen to this. Don't ever, you hear me? Don't ever speak in the name of Jesus ever, ever. Again, you got it? Now imagine this, that the devil hasn't told us that and we already shut up. Well, the reason I don't share my faith in other places is because I, I'm just intimidated. And I, I don't want to look crazy. And, They're dying. They're being abused. They're being tormented. 
Demons are taking over their lives. They're headed for hell. And you're worried about how you look? What well, God is saying, I was not worried about how I looked on the cross. And I died publicly for you. And I've given you my Holy Spirit. Go in them and tell them because you love them. So like they're telling the apostles, please don't ever, 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 ever. And this is how they respond. Peter, but Peter and John replied, and I think this is how you'd reply. Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? Like you must got this all messed up. You think I work for you? I don't work for you. I work for God. I got instructions from him. So you think by you telling me to shut up or threaten me, you're going to shut, 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 you're going to shut, shut, you're going to shut, shut, shut. And look what it says. We cannot, look at this, even if we, we just can't do it. We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. See, this is not a religion. I've experienced God. I was bound and now I'm free. I was demon possessed and now I got liberty. I was depressed and now I have joy. Come on. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was sick, but now I'm healed. Come on. I was dead and now I'm alive. My marriage was falling apart and then God came in and restored my marriage. Do you think I could stop telling people what God has done for me? I just now if you're here for the first time and you don't have a before and after experience why not allow God to touch you tonight you've allowed a lot of people you've allowed a lot of people to touch you for free <laughs> some people have touched you for just a Big Mac that was the date. Can I touch you now? What? Well, you just spent $10 on a Big Mac kind of fry and a, a little cake. And like, and you think like I'm that easy? Okay. <laughs> Come on, we're crazy. I'm just keeping it real because we've allowed a lot of people to touch us, a lot of things to touch us, and God is saying, come on, why don't you give me? You've been touched by drugs, been touched by drinking, been touched by dirty old people. Why don't you give me an opportunity to touch you and save you and give you eternal life? Today's your day. Don't put it off. Come on, does anybody need a touch of God? And the last thing, two reasons why the enemy persecutes us. To stop us from doing ministry. Because I just want to stop you from doing ministry. I want you to get offended in the church. You never do nothing in the church. I want you to get so hurt that you don't trust anybody ever again. Well, last time I was in church and I served God and I got hurt by all the leaders and all that stuff. I'll never serve God again. Stop making pacts with the devil. Reverse that curse on your life. Don't you let someone that was dysfunctional or maybe did hurt you and maybe did abuse you, don't let your abuser, abusers win by canceling out your purpose. You know what you need to do with those people? Just forgive them for they know not what they do. But you're not going to stop me from doing ministry. Last verse, Acts 5. 12. Now, this is chapter 5. This is chapter what? This chapter what? In chapter 4, they were told, shut up. In chapter 5, they don't shut up. Look at this. In Acts chapter 5, the apostles, the same apostles, were performing many miracles, miraculous signs, and wonders among the people. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple. So now this is what's happened. The fire spread and people are coming to church on a regular basis now. Miracles are happening. After preaching, after you share your testimony, comes confirmation of signs and wonders. 
See, we're praying for revival, and all we need to start doing is just start sharing our story. And when you start sharing your story, miracles follow believers. Let's look at this. In verse 14, so the, so the apostles are preaching, people are reading church, they're coming to church on a regular basis. It's not monthly, it's not just on Christmas, it's like every week. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. You just told us to shut up. This is what happened. The fire is spreading because when you persecuted me, this is what happened. You accelerated the mission. Crowds of both men and women were being saved. Verse 15, as a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. So there's some crazy happening now. They're so committed to God. And we know how committed they are because after they're being persecuted and brought in by the officials and the leaders to shut up, they don't shut up. Even being threatened to be killed and put in prison and beaten. They're still not shut them up, shutting up. This is what happens. Their commitment is being verified. And when your commitment has been verified, this is what happens, follows after you. What follows after you are signs, wonders, and miracles. You can't be committed to porn and God. Oh, Lord. And all I'm saying that because if anything is going to take out a godly man, it's going to be that. And I, I will tell you this, you have the power to say no to it because the power to say no to it is in you. It's Jesus. Okay, he's going. Out. Okay, so, so now crowds, verse 16, crowds came from all the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits. And they were all healed. So now the news is spreading. Do you have someone sick? Peter's going to be walking the streets. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put them, put, put them right there on the street. You know anybody that's demon possessed, bring them too. Because when Peter walks by, he's so close to God that his shadow actually has DNA of Jesus. So when he walks by, it's like Jesus walking by. It's the same spirit. Wow. So as they put people on the streets, all of them were healed. And I want you to get this. Peter didn't say, hey, line up everybody on the streets. And when my shadow hits them, they'll be healed. That was an idea the people came up with. Because they saw that these people were committed to Christ, that there was nothing going to stop them, and they started seeing the DNA or the results of Jesus. That's why they were persecuted. Look at this. So this is what they did. The high priest, these are the religious people, and his official, officials were, who were Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. Were filled with what? They arrested the apostles and put them in public jail. That's messed up. You're putting me in jail because people are getting healed and I'm casting out demons. You know, your crazy uncle's no longer crazy. You should be happy. Where it says this. They arrested the apostles, put them in public jail. But, look at this, but, someone say but. But an angel of the Lord came at night and opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple and they were, to as they were told, and immediately began teaching. This is what the apostles were saying. We're not going to stop, but this is what God was saying. I know you're not going to stop and I'm going to make sure you don't stop. So they could put you in a prison, but they can't hold you there unless I give them permission. So God sent an angel to open up the gates, and he says, they want you to stop speaking. This is what I'm commanding you to do. Keep speaking. How many want to start seeing 
God shut the mouths of the lions. How many want to see God's doing, God meeting you in a fiery furnace? How many want to see God begin to open prison doors and do miracles? This is how we're going to do it. We're going to be committed to God. We're going to live for him. Come on. We're going to share our testimony, and then God is going to back us up. It's time for us to make a difference and provoke hell and say we as the way, we as Christians, we as believers, this is what we're not going to do. We're not backing up. We're not quitting. We're going forward. We're going to preach. We're going to reach people, even if it means our lives are at stake. Come on. Are there any believers in this house that are sold out like that? Come on, let's all stand up. Is God good? Oh, Lord. I don't think there's any church in the world that's preaching about this. But I believe God's getting his army ready for the greatest miracles we've ever seen. You know what's happening with this next generation? They're bored with the version of Christianity we're delivering to them. I talked to a young lady that was in a regular family today. When I say regular, it's just regular. <laughs> Nothing powerful about it, just regular. When I looked at that young adult and I looked at her in the eye, I could tell she was hungry. Hungry for purpose. I could feel as I was speaking with her, the love of God flowing and touching her. And I could feel her saying in her soul, I just want something to believe in that I'm willing to die for. I got money. I live in a nice house, but I'm hurting on the inside. I feel unworthy, I feel worthless. I feel like nothing I'm doing is working. Give me something to live for that I'd be willing to die for. You were created to live for God. And I'll tell you this, if you're out there right now and you're strung out on something, that's not the real you, that's the fake you. The real you is a man of God, a woman of God that's powerful. If you're depressed, that's not the real you. If you feel like you're a failure, that's not the real you. That's not you. If you feel condemned and think, man, I'm just a mess up. That's not you. Stop accepting that identity. It's not you. If you're a gang member willing to die for your hood, that's not you. You're willing to die for the wrong thing. God has something more for you. You're not forgotten and God loves you. And this message is for every one of us that no matter what you've done, stop living your past Jesus paid the price for every wrong you've done. Stop punishing yourself. Receive forgiveness. Stop trying to prove yourself to everybody. God already accepts you. Come on. He loves you. The void that's in your heart, that boyfriend cannot fill it. You're looking for love, I understand that. And there's nothing wrong with having a boyfriend. But there is a problem when you're using a boyfriend to fill the emptiness in you, he'll never do it. And if you're, you're thinking that they'll do it, this is what they're gonna do. At the end, they're gonna tell you, what are you gonna do without me? Nobody's gonna ever want you. They'll even tell you that stuff. But the truth is, God wants you and God loves you. And we love you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question 
Are you ready for change tonight? Because want and change and get and change are, are two different things. Because want and change and get and change, get and change is going to take some action on your part. I'm tired of the way things are going. I'm not sure I'm right with God. I'm tired of having sleepless nights. I have no peace. My relationships are falling apart. And if I were to die right now, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. And the truth is my life is unfulfilling. And I want a full life. And you can have it today. Don't you leave here depressed and suicidal. Your freedom is here tonight. Come on, your freedom is here tonight. Come on, get it. And all it means is this. I say this last thing. When Jesus was on this earth, he was always ridiculed for one thing. Hanging around a whole bunch of sinners. And they would say, why are you hanging around with all those sinners? And then Jesus answered this. There's more joy in heaven when one sinner repents than the 99 that stayed. What he was saying is, why am I hanging around with sinners? That's who I came to reach. If you're a sinner, you're not disqualified. You're actually qualified. Come on, we're all in the same boat. God loves you. You've not gone too far. You can turn around now. I'm going to count to three and say, Pastor, that's me. I need to recommit my life to the Lord. That word commitment spoke to me tonight. I need to recommit my life to Lord. If you're a Christian and that word commitment spoke to you tonight, this is your night to recommit. Come on, get, come on, get committed. Get committed to a church. Get committed, come on, get committed to a location. Get committed to God. Stop floating around. Get committed, get rooted. Tonight's your night. Or you're saying tonight, you know, Pastor, I don't know if I were to die right now, I'd go to heaven, and I want to be saved. I want to get, I want a new life. I want a new beginning. This is your night. Or if you're saying, you know, Pastor, I need a breakthrough tonight. I, man, I'm struggling right now with this, the other, and I want freedom tonight. Tonight's my night. When I count the three, I want you to raise your hands. You're one decision away. Don't put it off. Right now's your day. One. Raise your hand and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. Recommit. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or right now, I need a breakthrough in my life. One, two. When, the race, when I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. So that's me. I see the hand there. I see the hand way in the back. I see the hand way over there. Anybody else? I'm ready to commit. I see the hand. Proud of you. Come on. Anybody else? Come on. I see the hand right over there. I see the hand right over there. I see the hand way in the back. I want those. I want those that raise their hands. There's a miracle going to happen tonight. If you feel like you're even demonized tonight, we're going to believe tonight that you're going to get set free from the tormented thoughts in your mind. Tonight's going to be your night. If you raise your hand, I want you to do one more bold step. Will you give me the privilege of praying with you? I want you to leave your seat, and I want you to come up here, even if you're way in the back. Come on, take your step in your direction. Come on, provoke hell by your commitment. Commit to Trump walking forward. Commit to going to the next level. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Someone's marriage is going to be restored. Someone's mind is going to be restored. Someone's going to get healed tonight. Give your life to Jesus.
Church, let's never, ever take for granted the people that God is bringing to his kingdom. Come on, we're invading hell. This provokes hell right here. And we're going to let you know this. God absolutely loves you. He loves you. He's going to help you. When you come to Jesus, he's not here to judge you. He's here to heal you and set you free and restore you. Receive it. Receive forgiveness. And I'll even say this, forgive yourself. Stop beating yourself up proud of you. Proud of you. Stop beating yourself up. And if God's going to forgive you, you just receive it, right? Proud of you. Proud of you. God bless you. Let's do this. Okay. Tonight you're committing to follow Jesus. You're not committing to say a prayer and leave and never see you again. It does you no good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, this is what you're committed to, to be a committed follower of Jesus Christ. He's going to fill you with his power to be able to do that. You're going to be able to do this. Proud of you. Awesome. Let's do this. Your life's going to change right now. Let's pray right now together. Let's pray right now. We're, we're going to pray for freedom. We're going to pray for salvation. We're going to pray for a breakthrough tonight. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for all my sins so that I could be forgiven and set free from the power of sin and demons in the name of Jesus. Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. From this day forward, I repent. I am done with my old lifestyle. And I'm living for you. You alone, Jesus. I commit my life to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and set me free. I receive the free gift of eternal life. And from this day forward, I will follow you for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand, church. God bless you. Enjoy your, your tonight. And also remember Sunday morning, we are having service at 9 and 11. I got another word for you. God has a word. And also, um, if you want to sign up for One Day LA or our backpack giveaway, make sure you sign up. God bless you. Remember this, if God is for you, there's no one that can come against you. You guys are awesome. God bless.